let me transfer you. Switch to Farm Bureau Insurance today and get real service instead of getting really tangled up. For auto, home, life, and health, get the membership advantage. Get Farm Bureau Insurance. You know, Duke University is um, a very well-coached football team. Uh, Coach Cutcliffe has done a, a fantastic job in the two years he's been there, kind of changing the culture, um, you know, from facilities to just what's going on there involving the students, you know, all those things. He's got a kind of a new mindset that he's created for the players. Uh, they were 4-7 and seven last year, but, you know, played in a lot of good games, um, had opportunities to – to score some points and did a great job taking the ball away from people. So he's got a very talented team returning. Even though they only have nine seniors on their roster, there's a there's a very talented team that uh, uh, both offensively and defensively that uh, can 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 pose a lot of teams' problems. So, uh, but we're excited about the challenge to go down there and, and play those guys in another ACC venue, and and we'll see what happens. Thank you. Questions for coach. Uh, Mike, you, your team was real good on the road last year, and uh, Richmond was good on the road the year before. I'm wondering, apart from having good players, the keys to being a good road team. Well, one of the, one of the things you always have to just worry about is trying to control the things that you can control. Uh, you can't control their crowd, um, the referees. I mean, you can't control things like that, but you can control the plays that you do or the plays that you run and how you execute those things. It's you know, we talk about, and I've learned a long time, you know, it's, all that matters is what happens between the white lines um, because wherever you go, there'll be a different set of circumstances, but but the execution of playing, you know, um, playing your position or, or, or executing the schemes or the concepts always remains constant. And so if you just think about those things, then, you know, you just play the game. Since the spring you've been saying new year, new team, what is different about this year? And obviously we know what you hope is the same from last year, but what is what is going to be different from the fans' point of view about this season? Well, you know, it, it is. Every year a, a team's identity has to be forged in terms of who are going to be the, the playmakers. I mean, obviously you hope that guys that have been in that position before can continue to step up and make plays, but there's also – you know, a fairly good number of players that are yet to have been seen or heard from or have a significant number of reps. So we're looking to find players that can add to the team, guys that can make plays. And I, I think that uh, everyone will be able to tell early whether who those players will be. And that's always the case for any team right now that's getting ready to start out, that you're, you're always – Everybody talks about the returners and the lettermans, but there's always a group or a handful of guys that end up becoming uh, household names because you're like, where do they come from? Well, I'm hoping that we got a lot of those guys that are that are waiting to emerge here. Coach, I guess just the excitement level finally getting this season going. The you know the title defense starts on Saturday. How excited are you to get out there? Well, I'm, we're excited to play football. You know, we're excited to do the thing that uh, do the things that football players do and competitors do, and that's compete. And it's not so much as defending a title or anything. It's just, you know, we've gone through the spring practices, we've gone through early fall camp where the guys have, you know, gone against each other, and you know, uh, it's probably what they're tired of uh, practicing against each other. They're tired of coaches. Coaches are tired of them, and we're ready to play somebody else. So, um, the season provides for that opportunity. And uh, we're excited that uh, on September 7th, you know, uh, we get to play Duke. Now, you think it's uh, better to be playing up a level as you sort of, quote, unquote, begin a title defense as opposed to playing a more traditional FCS opponent to open up? You know, not necessarily. I think the, the, main, the main point is to play, you know, wherever you're, wherever you're playing. Um, it's the competition. It's the, okay, after all the, the practices and the plays and, and things like that, okay, well, let's execute. And that's the, that's the exciting thing about it. It's not particularly who you play, but seeing the whole thing put together, offense, defense, kicking game, and, and those things. So that's what we're looking forward to, and we'll see how, uh, how all that pans out when we play this Saturday. You're in the rare position of being an FCS team playing a 1A team that is looking for revenge on this program. I know you weren't here. David wasn't there when you guys all played. All your seniors were there. Is there a difference in the way that you guys are going to get ready knowing this isn't just an ACC team looking to open their season? It's an ACC team that 
wants to uh, to exact a measure of revenge on this program for what happened uh, four years ago? Uh, you know, that's that's something that uh, perhaps Coach Cutcliffe is talking to his team about, uh, but but I doubt it. I mean, it's one of those things that uh, you know I wasn't there. I mean, there are a lot of players that weren't there when that when that went down, um, but. Again, it's one of those things that uh, when you have it, we have a chance to play an, a an ACC school or BCS school that you know we're going to give it our best, and I know that Duke is, and I know somewhere in the back of their mind, if, if not, um, you know, one of the things they talk about is is an opportunity to play us and you know, quote unquote, one of the better teams in the FCS, and uh, and start their season off right. It's all about starting your season off right right now with a W, and that's all that matters. Coach, uh, after last season, specifically with the student body, the team has really gotten a lot more popular. Uh, and along that line, 275 students are going to be going down to Duke. Uh, five buses are being sponsored. What does that mean to you guys as a team? And basically, what are your thoughts about that? That's fantastic. I mean, I, I'd heard that uh, first there were a couple buses that uh, had been uh, reserved. Now, you know, you say there's there's five. So, I mean, that's that's fantastic for for us to have the support of the students here at UR is is tremendous, and uh, face painting and Afro wigs with red and blue, you know, and any other creative things they can come up with. I mean, it's 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 great. It's great to see that, and hopefully, uh, not just with football, but it, it continues on for all the other men and women's sports here at UR that we can get, you know, a large student backing and, and following. So that that'll be exciting to see them down there, and I I'd like to say you know I appreciate that and. I uh, look forward to seeing them and look forward to seeing them in a lot of uh, home and away games. Mike, when you were an assistant at uh, Boston College in Virginia, what concerned you when you played a 1AA? W was there anything in particular? Uh, you know, you, you, sometimes you just had to kind of, uh, as born a term that uh, Coach Grow all used to use, kick human nature's butt. I mean, sometimes you think about, well, yeah, they're one, they're one double A, and they're not going to be as talented. We got more scholarships. We got this. We got that. So you just have to make sure that you don't allow the players to uh, to slip into that mind frame. And on the other end, then you talk you talk about well, you know, you we don't have the scholarships that they have. You know, they got better this, better that. Um, you know, you may or may not have been recruited by them. So let's show that we can we can play and belong on the same field with them. So it, being on both sides, you you can see the different uh, different avenues of approach that you would take. I can ask one more as long as we're on a FCS subject. You don't have any FCS transfers on this team, and you're going to be playing some teams this year with plenty of them. Do you have a general philosophy on FCS transfers? <laughs> um, you know, it is. This is the way the school is here. I mean, it's uh, it's a very good academic school, and it's not to say that we can't take transfers. Um, you know, if they if they meet the academic requirements to get into school here, then then uh, they will. And but uh, it, it's just something that uh, you know we 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 understand. Um, we move forward on, and we just end up trying to play. You know, play better football than uh, than, than the other teams do. So, um, you know, that's. Uh, that's something that's been like that for a while, and, and, and uh, it's not anything that, you know, that, that causes us to, you know, to, to look to the left or to the right. And we just, we just keep looking forward and just keep moving ahead. Coach, I guess the difference between last year at this time, first year head coach playing Virginia, and this year in terms of emotions, anticipation, anything like that? It's all the same. You know, it's, it's again, I go back to the competition, the love of the game, uh, the love that the players have when they get a chance to compete against somebody else other than themselves, you know, since August. It, it goes back to, uh, you know, being a play in front of your family and friends again and, and your students and, and the, your, your, your hometown fans that are, are going to follow you down. So it's all about the competition of it. Um, you know, not for me, it's always been that way, 20 years of coaching. You know, there's been a lot of first. This is the 20th year of first game, but you know, the season is getting ready to take place is the thing that you really get psyched up for and and um, so that's what we're looking looking forward. Anything else for coach? All right coach, thanks for your time. If I could say one more thing, um, you know this year 
Uh, we're going to wear in the back of our helmets a commemorative sticker of uh, Frank Jones, who was a great, great football coach here. Had a, you know, he, he coached great teams here. He took, coached the 1968 Tangerine Bowl team. Players like Barty Smith, Walker Gillette, Buster O'Brien, you know, uh, a coach like uh, Ray Tate, who was on the staff there. So it's, uh, it's kind of special for us to, to represent um, a gentleman like, uh, like Coach Jones. Um, I, I always had the good fortune to to see him maybe a week before he passed and was able to give him something uh, from the from the championship game uh, that uh, his family was there and it would me really meant a lot and you know coach Jones was a guy that kind of brought Richmond football put it on the map and uh, we just hoped that did this season or or whatever happens this year that uh, that we were well representative of of being uh, uh, a representative of Richmond football and and some of the things that he did while he was here.